candidates within the margin of error on each other. Sean Spicer is the communications director for the Republican National Committee. He joins us now from the Republican National Committee headquarters in Washington, D.C. And Sean, do you agree with uh, Republican nominee Mitt Romney that the debate is not about winning and losing? Well, I don't think it's about, you know, who scores the most points or not. It's about laying out a vision for where we want this country to go, talking about how each candidate has a different vision. President Obama talking about a, you know, a, a dependency on government, what he promised in 2008 and hasn't gotten done. And Mitt Romney talking about the plan he has to take this country forward. So I think it's an opportunity for both candidates to talk about where they want this this country to head and the vision they have. I think, unfortunately, um, you're going to have President Obama make a lot of excuses as to why, when he was on that stage four years ago, uh, not much of what he ever said was going to happen occurred. Now, on the subject of winning and losing, Chris Christie, a big supporter of Mitt Romney, has come out and said he expects a big win for Governor Romney in this debate. Uh, we talked to Brad Woodhouse yesterday from the Democratic side. This is what he said about Christie's comments. And I think you set the, the bar high for, for Mitt Romney, and the bar should be high for Mitt Romney. I mean, he's gone through this campaign. We're five weeks out, someone said, and he has not uh, said how he paid for his tax plan. We're five weeks out, he hasn't said how he'll shore up Medicare or Social Security to protect benefits instead of cutting them. So the bar is really high for him. I think Chris Christie said it, uh, said it even a little higher. So, Sean, how high is the bar for Governor Romney? I, I've seen the, the folks from the Obama campaign have talked down the expectations from the president so many days in a row that today I expect him to come out and say that the president's got a fear of public speaking. Uh, I mean, these guys keep talking it down like, you know, it's going to be uh, a, a blow away. The, the fact is the president's the only one who's been on a one on one stage seven times. So you guys are doing the, the same cycle. thing. He's you the... complained about it when the Democrats do it, but then you said the same thing. No, but I'm just, I mean, the president is the only one who's actually been through a presidential debate. By all accounts, I think the one thing that Republicans and Democrats can agree upon is the president is a gifted speaker. He has amazing rhetoric. He can go out there and wow a crowd. That is his strength. I will give him that. But I think that the, there is a big difference between going out over and over again and making promises and having great rhetoric and then having a record to... to follow up on. I mean, that's where I think you're going to see the contrast tomorrow night. Um, Governor Romney is going to be able to lay out very succinctly where he wants to take the country and his plans and policies. I think the president's going to be talking about blame and excuses as to why he wasn't able to get things done, even though he had a Democratic Congress for two years of his presidency. Now, he made very specific promises, John, in 2008 on that same stage when he was, when he was going uh, after Senator McCain about cutting the deficit in half, enacting a comprehensive immigration reform, closing let's, Guantanamo let's talk about immigration reform. Energy, Let's talk about yeah. immigration reform because uh, Mitt Romney's been criticized as well for not being specific about his plans. And last night in Denver, uh, he may have made a little bit of news on his views on immigration policy uh, specifically. He did an interview with the Denver Post where he talked about uh, the DREAM Act or the waivers that, that President Obama granted to, to kids born here in this country. And this is what Governor Romney said. He said the people who have received the special visa that the president has put in place, which is a two-year visa, should expect that the visa would continue to be valid. I'm not going to take something that they purchased uh, away, basically, before those visas have expired. We will have the full immigration reform plan that I've proposed. What he's saying there is he's not going to go after these people. This is the first time that he's really said that. He's had months to lay out this policy. Why are we only hearing it now for the first time? Uh, well, I, I've heard it. I mean, in the sense that the pre that what Governor Romney's talking about in terms of immigration is securing our border and then enacting comprehensive immigration reform, among which includes trying to keep families together, uh, H-1B visa expansions, so that when you have a, someone from another country that comes to the United States and gets a degree in higher education and technology or science, that we staple an H-1B visa to them so that they can stay in this country and help grow our economy and create jobs here. So he has always made keeping families together part of his comprehensive immigration. But he has never said, he has never question, said that he would let these visas stand, that the, that the president has just granted. No, no, no. What, what, I, what, what, what you just said to me was that he said he was going to have it taken care of, meaning that he has said that among his top priorities would be working with Congress, enacting a comprehensive immigration reform, of which keeping families together would be part of that program. So I think it's totally consistent with what he said, because it's a top priority of his to get done. And not like this president, he would get it done in the first two years of his administration. It, it may be consistent, but you do agree what he told the Denver Post last night is new. It is new news, as we say in the news business. He's never said that before. 
Well, I, I, you may be saying he never enacted, used those same words in the same sentence before, but again, if you go ahead and look at uh, MittRomney.com where he lays out his immigration thing, it talks about keeping families together. He also talks about making it a top priority in his administration the first two years. So I think to say within the first two years, I'm going to have this solved so that we don't break up families is completely consistent with the plan that he's laid out. Uh, just a few minutes ago, Quinnipiac University released a new poll. We've seen a lot of polls the last few days. Uh, one of the numbers that jumped out at a lot of people in this poll was the so-called gender gap. President Obama leading Mitt Romney 56 to 38 percent. My math says that's an 18 point lead among women. Why such a big gap, Sean? Uh, well, I think it's something that we continue to talk to all Americans about the, the path going forward. But you could similarly make the case that President Obama has a has a gender gap with with uh, with men. Ten points. He a lot has smaller. a gender gap with he has a gender gap with independent or excuse me a, a gap with independence. So I mean, you can look at a poll and start breaking out various things. But I can rest assured that I can tell you that Governor Romney's plan is one that addresses how to make this country better for all Americans. That it deals with issues that that women care about in terms of ensuring that we have better health care so that our families and our kids can get better, that we have uh, fewer regulations because so many women are running small businesses today. So it is a campaign that's focused on all Americans. Um, and, and so I, I think you're going to hear a lot more about that at the debate. But um, and, and, and I, you know, I, I believe that that will all close up by Election Day. All right. Sean Spicer, Communications Director for the Republican National Committee. It is great to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, you very much. Check out the